position is an actual or attempted abuse of someone's position of vulnerability, such as a person depending on you for survival, food rations, school books, transport or other services. It can also be a show of power or trust to obtain sexual favors, including but not only by offering money or other social, economic or political advantages. It includes trafficking and prostitution. Welcome to Identities and my name is Nyari Mashiamumi. Welcome to Identities Zoom Club where we talk about important issues. Happy New Year. I hope the year is going on well. And to kickstart off our year, we are so lucky to have our colleagues from Adult Rep Clinic and Miss Rumbi is not new to us. Rumbi Zaizimuzi, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me here. Thank you. And again, this show is brought to us by Adult Rep Clinic ARC. And we're here to talk about sexual exploitation, especially in crisis um, and abuse, especially of children during crisis. And my first question to you, Ruby, is what does a typical sexual abuse look like in Zimbabwe? Okay, so I think we've got um, a wide range of abuses. Yeah. But talking about sexual abuse in line with sexual exploitation, we're talking about people in power and this power is the type of power whereby maybe it's an organization that is giving food aid to a place, or maybe they have got school books, like your right to say. But instead of just giving out these school books or this food aid to the children in the communities where they are supposed to go to, they then in return ask for favors from these children or from the families of children. So that is the form of abuse which we are discussing here. Yeah. So we are talking about children, and we're talking about crisis. When we're in crisis, we're talking about the COVID-19. Yes. Uh, we can also refer to, to uh, cyclones that have uh, happened in Shalane. Cyclone, Sh Cyclone Shalane, we've also had Cyclone Edai, and we're saying that it, it looks like when someone is distributing food. Um, I, I think uh, we, before we came on, on air, I was like, but is it practical that if someone has the intentions of abusing a child, um, a girl or a boy, um, during distribution of food or its books, or sometimes it's people in positions of authority, as you have said. To what extent does that child practically have power to say no to abuse? So you know what, I think it's good that we're actually having a show like this because the viewers out there will then know and also be well informed to say, when someone who is um, coming to a community, let's say to a village with some food aid, with food parcels, that person is actually on a job. Right. They need to. They just need to deliver these food parcels. They don't need to then say to a young girl, "Let me touch your breasts," mm. or maybe come to my house later. Let me kiss you in exchange. These food parcels should just be given out. Mm. And this information we're giving out is to empower these young children right. and their families to know that there is nothing they should give in exchange. They should just receive the food parcel and go home and not have to be told, I'll see you tomorrow, come back when it's dark. No, that should not happen. That is the expectation that we're talking about. Then sometimes someone could argue and say, Kuti, um, at the end of the day, sometimes they, these people are not the ones who will start, you know, like wanting to be advancing on a child. Um, if it's a girl or it's a boy, but mainly a lot of girls, for praying to this, and then you find that at the end of the day, it is the child who offers themselves to this person. So they are on the line, they are getting food like everybody else. They are smiling extra to this person because they want an extra advantage. This person is not the one who is initiated, but because maybe this is a kid who can actually who's seeing that, maybe if I try to be more nicer to this person, maybe it's a food ration that you spoke about. And they're trying to say, if I got nicer to this person, maybe, I could get extra. Yes, I, I get where you're coming from, Yari, and yes, that does happen a lot. But being a humanitarian worker means you're in a position of knowing what is wrong and what is mm -hmm. right. You need to know the job comes with people wanting to be in your good books, so to speak, because maybe they hope you give them an extra ration. But it's the job of this humanitarian worker. It's our responsibility as the people that are in power, so to speak, to then say, you know what, to this young child, Anyway, you don't really need to do this. Mm. It's our job to set, the, to draw the line somewhere. Right. We know better. We've right. been taught. There have been trainings. Right. So the humanitarian worker, right. whoever is giving out this aid, knows better. 
the child, like the rapper say, is a child. They right. probably don't even know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. In their minds, they're thinking, you know what, this is a way, a means to an end. But the, what I'm saying is that the older person, the worker knows that is not allowed. So they should not exploit whatever, whether this person falls at their feet, they should not exploit that child. So Rumbi, has this been happening in Zimbabwe? I mean, of course, I've read, um, you know, reports. It almost sometimes feels like just abstract or things that have come from copy and paste from other reports from other countries. Do we have actually, you know, children being abused in crisis? We have a lot of children being exploited in Zimbabwe, in Harare, in all these places that you're talking no, about. No, 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 no. Yes, mm. because then they were they ended up without shelter. And then the person at Upama tent then tells them you have to come into my tent. So these things wow. that they they are happening, children have been exploited. And unfortunately because they don't know that to report or if they can even report, sometimes people in power make people believe that you can never report to mm. anyone because I'm in power. Right. But this is why we're here to say to people, you know what, you need to be safe. No one has the right at all to ever exploit you in exchange for any favor. That is so sad, if I can put it that way, Rumbi, and it's very touching. I mean, I'm already getting emotional because I think I kind of know what lack is, you know, to be desperate to, to get food when you need it. And we all have gotten to a place where we, once in a while, we're very vulnerable. And so I just want you, for the purposes of someone who's watching Rumbi, maybe it's a kid, maybe it's a parent, maybe it's a neighbor, or someone who works in the humanitarian who does not know this, that maybe Pakatrin or Ramwe, it skipped them. What are some of the circumstances that find that kids or, or, or young women, young men, find themselves in of vulnerabilities? Okay. So a typical example is whereby we have school feeding programs. I hope you appreciate that there are some communities whereby when the children go to school, they will get some porridge. So yeah. it's, it's, it's very simple things like yeah. that. So sometimes a child, will, the teachers, unfortunately, sadly, I'm not saying all teachers are bad, yeah. but you get that one bad apple where sometimes yeah. maybe because they are responsible, they'll say to a certain girl that, and this is a student, so this teacher would then say, if you want a double portion of porridge or something, right. You then need to go to the teacher's classroom. And then these girls will report he either asked me to touch his private parts or something. And because tomorrow she thinks it's okay, I'll get a double mm. portion of the porridge. So it, it's really sad. It's shocking to say mm. the least. But it's cases like that. And then in communities, maybe these young girls don't even know. In her mind, she's thinking, ah, maybe he'll just touch my breast mm. and I'll get the porridge. She's hungry. Mm. She's coming from a home way. Because of the drought, there hasn't been anything in the fields. They don't even have milly meal in their yeah. home. So this porridge for her is the meal that should sustain mm. her through the day. And to get a double portion, I mean, it's mm. maybe even worth going to this teacher. And then outside the schools, you have got communities whereby some other children are then told maybe they're being given farming inputs or receiving mm. the food parcels. You get there and maybe for the extra two kgs of uh, sugar or something, or the person who's... Because so some of the aid workers will be staying in these communities and people mm. know, ah, what John, what no Galapo, and no mm. mm. So it's two things. Sometimes you've got these young children going to this man's place because they're hoping for these sexual favors. Mm. And what we have said before in the show is to say, you are the humanitarian worker, you should know better. Mm. But surprisingly, some people will open their doors to these young children for that extra two kgs of mm. sugar. And then sometimes there's actual sexual intercourse that happens between these people because you can exploit it. This so it's rape. So they go on yes, to rape. They it's, are. It can't it's be sexual. It's, it's rape. They go so on to rape. Yes, yeah. you can always then say the degrees of sexual exploitation, sometimes they'll end with just a hug. Sometimes they'll mm. say, I just got kissed. And then sometimes people will actually go all the way. And this is really poverty hits people in different mm. ways. Mm. And at the end of the day, you're thinking, I need that two kgs of sugar. So this is what we're saying should not be happening. You know, people should just, if there's food aid, it should just mm. be given. There is nothing that should be given in exchange, and I'll keep on reiterating mm. that. Mm. Yes. And I think the most powerful word that you've just said that really jumped uh, onto my heart is, you should know better. The humanitarian workers must know better to not exploit. So when you have been sent, because as you say, you've been sent 
it's not in your place to to start abusing children it's not in your place to start um you know exploiting people just because so people need to behave with responsibility but i think when we come back we want to also we, when we come back from the break we want to also try to explore the legalities around it to say okay I know a child or I know a person who's been abusing or who's been exploiting um, you know children or women or whoever is being exploited in the community and I think some exploitations can also come in the form of Dipei Mari or things like that we want to talk about it when we come when we come back from this break stay with us Welcome back to your favorite show, Identity Zone Trouble. But today I'm joined by Madame Rumbi Zaizemozi from Adult Red Clinic. She's a nurse by profession herself. And we're discussing the issue of children, sexual violence, or people, or, or exploitation of people in crisis or humanitarian settings uh, in the face of COVID-19, in the face of the cyclones that have hit Zimbabwe, Cyclone I Die. Cyclone Idai, like others call it, and Shalen, which just passed. And we have already learned about the circumstances in which children find themselves vulnerable. We want to talk also about the boy child later, but we, for now, I, I felt like, yeah, we had explored, um, you know, heartily some of the, you know, circumstances in which children find themselves vulnerable, but it feels like children do not have power or, or people do not have power, but I just want to quickly share um, a story. So this friend told me about uh, one time there were a, a woman, a uh, story of a woman who at one point she was lining uh, to buy chicks, you know, the day of chicks, uh, you know, how in Zimbabwe we go and line at some place because they are not you know sufficient people go lying there. So she was lining together with others they, they went there early in the morning like 4, 3, 3 a.m., 4 a.m. They go there, they would be knowing that on Mondays chicks are sold so they went there, they waited around 7, 8 a.m. Um, then the, the guard just came and said, well, today we're not selling because the owners are not here. Then people were complaining, you know, just quietly, people were just complaining. And this one young woman just rose up and she lost it. And she said, you can't treat us like that. You've got an obligation to sell to us. You tell us every day that we must come here and we, 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 we are to buy our chicks, you know, whatever day that was. And then everybody, I think it's the vividness in which she rose up to challenge authority, to challenge, you know, mistreatment. And everybody joined to the extent that the manager was called from wherever they were to come and sell chicks to people. So I think it's just an example of people power that when people really can demand from authority, do you feel like children do have power or even community do have power to stand on behalf of children or even on their own behalf? Yes, Nyari, thank you for even bringing out that one person. So that's actually basically what it takes sometimes. It takes that one child who's watching this show, that one parent from a community, because at the end of the day, you know, the journey of the <laughs> any journey can begin yeah. with just one single yeah. step. Right. So what we're saying is children need to know what is right and what is wrong. And then children also need to know that they have rights. They have rights to be had. Mm. They also have rights not to be abused or exploited. So at the end of the day, if that one child then reports to say, you know what, the teacher said if he gives me a double portion of porridge, I should go to his classroom. Mm -hmm. That is enough. Whether it's telling the next teacher, whether they're reporting it to the headmaster. So mm -hmm. we want to use these structures where these people are coming from to say if, it, if it's at a school, there's probably a senior teacher, yeah. there's a headmaster, there's a guardian and counseling mm -hmm. teacher. Can you just tell those people? And then if it's in our communities, you can either get back home and tell your mother, yeah. Mama, Nancy and Zinka, who are in college, we yeah. also we have not teacher for class quality. Well, that yeah. should be something. Yeah. So this is what we're saying. People need to speak yeah. out. Yeah. And the fact that we are having this show is for that person who has no yeah. idea. Yeah. Because um, unfortunately, people feel 
Ah, but you know what they're giving us for it. So in a way, they feel indebted to the people yes. to say, I need to mm. do this. But no, that is what they're saying. You do not need to do anything in return for food aid, for whatever school program. If someone is paying a school fee, they don't then say, come to my house or let me, you know, it doesn't work like that. Mm. So what we're saying is, please speak out. I think mm. that's what we need. Speak out to places like child line, yeah. you need to just dial their yeah. number. Yeah. Come to ARC if you're near where we are, yeah. or go to the nearest police station because yeah. we have few officers, we work closely with them. Tell someone about what is happening around you. Wow, tell someone in the organizations like uh, Tali as well, which is responding to cases of violence. I mean, many several organizations, and uh, as, yes, as, as you mentioned, Rumbi, maybe someone is saying that, uh, but what if it's the teacher? Um, you know, someone who is directly maybe, and, and I think Rumbi, we've had a lot of cases where, for example, it's a teacher who's abusing, who's responsible for the porridge that you mentioned. And then when I went to school, aid, school aid does not act. Okay. So I hope people appreciate that in this country, then no one is ambassador. If it's not the school head, it's going to be your parents back home, who can, if it's in a community go, there's a village head. Mm. Someone somewhere along the line will right. believe you. So you know the mm. village head doesn't believe you. Go to the other community leader. Go to a church even. We're a Christian nation. Sometimes you just need to tell someone in the church, a church elder. If that doesn't work, a police, keep on telling people. Yeah. Eventually, there is one person who's going to have to listen to mm. you. I yes. keep talking. So Rumbi, how important is conversations between a parent and a child um, like I said, you just painted a picture where uh, the child comes home and she tells the mother, oh, this teacher promised me an extra portion if um, I come to his class. What do you recommend parents do from then on? Mm. Okay. I think we need to advise parents that this era is not the era where children should only be seen and not heard. Yeah. Sadly, in our Zimbabwean families and set up, sometimes children are just left to be, you know, but now we're encouraging parent-to-child communication. In this time where there's a lockdown and children are with their parents in the homes, we're encouraging communication. We're encouraging parents to find out what is happening in the lives of their children because you'd be surprised at the number of things that children sometimes fail to, to report because they are afraid or scared of their parents. Uh -huh. So we want to be moving away from that time where you know, at the end of the day, if you child, something happens, you mm. don't have anyone to tell. The parent should be the person, your guardian should be the person. You get home and you tell them what happens to you every day. And parents, please kindly listen to your mm. children. Take whatever it is that might sound very silly to say, mm. you know what, my child said this. Yeah. Let me look into it. Let me go to that school and find out what is happening. Uh, I think you just said something also very important that let's not ignore what children say. Let's not ignore the hints and just put and sometimes parents know and they're just so tired of of following up they're tired of problems they're just like you know what i've had it in, uh, I've, had, I've had it up to here i've had enough of problems you know they're having to do a lot of things but how how deep are, how deep is a harm uh, to a child just so we encourage a parent who just can ignore or a garden you would like ah but was dumb kind of bam how from how bad is it for a child um, to go through this, whether it's in the present or in, the, you know, in the next life? So I think where we want to come from, the angle we want to take is we want to empower children because sometimes, you know, what for most children that stay with just their parents, what their parents say, or what their parents think, or how their parents act really then molds that child into wow. the person that they mm -hmm. become when they grow up. So if I get home and I tell my mother that someone touched my bum and then they told me it's just my bum, so next time I'm not even going to tell them. Yeah. And then we normalize abuse yeah. because of mm -hmm. the way we react. And then also I wanted to bring out the fact that sometimes about children, it's not always about what they say, it's also about looking at them, what mm -hmm. are they doing. A child who was previously not bedwetting, when they start bedwetting, you need to worry. Mm -hmm. A child who was someone who's happy and jolly, who laughs, when they become withdrawn, as a parent, you need to start worrying. So not only about talking, but also about just observing mm. what is happening with mm. the children in the homes. Mm. And how deep is the harm? How deep is the after effect? Ndekabatuwa zamunas as a child. Ndekabatuwa vamangwana as a child. What is the impact in my future? If my mother ignores it, and maybe I'm definitely going, usually offenders, vanutanga nema sweets, gotu ya kumba kwangu, wobatuwa bam. Or go back to school private, but the next thing is work to a report. Um, how how bad is that? 
for the child now and the child in the future. Okay. So sometimes we question ourselves about uh, some children that we see even on social media dancing to tomorrow, they're mm -hmm. whining on some guy's lap. I'm not mm -hmm. saying this is what happens to all these children, but sometimes some habits we see later on in our children when foster as well now at Chipura. Yeah. Sometimes we see women on the streets and we're thinking, ah, this one is a sex worker. But what about this child, this person's childhood? What was happening when mm -hmm. they were growing up? So some of the things or some of the um, actions that people exhibit when they grow up were fostered when they were young. Right. So it's it's that deep. Right. It molds what someone becomes in their life, mm -hmm. how they react. Or sometimes these are the people who abuse other people. Mm -hmm. You know the statement about how people who've been hurt will hurt other Others, people. Yeah. So there's that. It's, it's like a vicious cycle. Yeah. Really. Yeah, wow. So. so that's how deep it goes. And um, as we're just concluding this segment, as we're coming back, I just want to invite you to think about the people around you, the children around you, the children around, in your own community. Because one of the things that I know about our culture is sometimes we are never brought up to show love. We can't ask a child who says, oh, you know, this this that happened, maybe you're a guardian. We're just, you know, we're positioned to just ignore children, even your own child, to want to pick up a conversation with a parent. Some parents just dismiss the children. There's no rapport with children to actually come and tell you what's happening. There's a lot of blaming uh, the victim, blaming one. I remember it. I, I think after the break, I'm going to, to, to share a brief about what happened to me. And I thought, don't go away, stay with us. We're just taking a quick break. back to your favorite show identity zone flower with nyari mashaya mombe we were talking today to adult rape clinic act uh, representative rubiza izemozi she's a nesca professional health practitioner and um i'm just loving the conversation on this the passion that she has for children for women and just serving community thank you so much for your hard work and you are running to the clinic to the other clinic at paris soon after this and thank you for the amazing work you're doing even during COVID 19. before we went on the break um ruby i wanted to say just building from the issue of you know sometimes and you know the culture that's brought up in the home or just being brought up a zimbabwean child without even your mother telling you i remember there was a teacher then he put it, he was my geography teacher, he put, put it in the book, he was proposing love to me. And I remember in that moment when I saw that letter, I freaked out. What came to mind was, who is going to believe me? First of all, there were teachers who went out with kids at our school. And I was not going to be that statistic because they would, they would fall pregnant and they would leave school. For me, it was not an option. I was in enough namo, I could not carry any other. I just wanted to do my school and leave the school and proceed with my life. And now I was then thinking, if I go and tell my mom, she's going to ask me, what did you do to attract that teacher? You know how as girls we are brought up to say, so we are brought up as children to think that it's your fault when a man comes unto you. What do you have to say to, to parents about such talk and also to children who have been victims of such talk? Okay, so I think for starters, we need to stop, you mentioned this before, stop victim blaming. Yeah. We should never find ourselves as parents or as guardians asking the question, what were you wearing, where were you, what did you do? It should never be about the survivor or the victim. The person who's wrong here is the perpetrator. Yeah. Is that humanitarian worker? Is that teacher? Is that other person? It should never be the child. Mm. We need to move away from that and we really need to listen to what the child is saying to us. We need to teach our children and I'm happy, like I was, I've said before, that we're having such shows which I hope mm. as parents watch, they can even then call their children into the room to say, yeah. you know what, come and listen to this show together. Mm. So that children will just know and parents will respect them and children will respect themselves. Right. So I think that's the other thing. Before you expect to say, 
well, let me, uh, you know, my parents believe me. Children need to know that, yes, your parents will believe you. You need to just speak out. I think that's what we're asking children to do. Speak about it. What mm. happens after you've spoken, that remains to be seen. But at least just say something. And like you're saying to parents out there, take time to listen. Let's not judge our very own children. We should be mm. the safe space for yeah. our children. Yes. Well, I, I think you've just emphasized and hammered on the point that if you're a child, if it has happened to you, speak out. Speak out until you've been heard. If your mother or your father are actually benefiting from it, because we've got parents who are pimping children, Rumbi, who are sending children who into sexual exploitation. You know, my mothers as well as fathers, you know, arranging marriages for children. It's very sad. It, it's sad because of the crisis. We're talking of COVID yeah. nineteen. It's mm -hmm. sad that we've got mothers who've lost their jobs, fathers who've lost their homes, and in their mind they're thinking they're doing the best for their children because it's a means to an end. They need to mm -hmm. eat. They need to feed mm -hmm. their families. So um, sadly, COVID is not really our own problem here in like our setup. It's everywhere. It's around the world. But these are some of the. Um, effects of COVID-19 yeah. that we're faced with yeah. and it's, it's a huge problem so I know when you're the parent that is sitting and thinking what do I cook tonight yeah. and then there's that humanitarian worker who's next door and mm. you've got your 17 year old daughter mm. it's very easy sometimes to say let me just send her to, to mm. offer to sweep for this person who gives food and sometimes the parents don't know any better but they should never do that yeah. I know people will then say so what do we do yeah. 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 How yeah. what do I do? I like I like because I was going to ask you that. Yes. And it's a tough question for yeah. us all to say what do you do? But whatever it is that you do, do not print your children. Mm. You know, find something else to do. But if you need to, I'm sorry to say this, then go yourself. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, my man. I was like, if 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 we're going to 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 if we are going to resort to pimping, do it yourself. Huh? Do it yourself, course, but of course, which but I think, child, yeah, I, yeah, you know, and um, but you know, it comes also with complications, Rumbi, especially when you're touching on issues of sexual sexual exploitation. Uh, to say that sometimes it is the man who's going to demand you to, oh, you are done. I want the fresh one. Sure. You understand? So sometimes I think the moment you go that route, the moment you go human boarding. On that route, it's, it's he's gonna you have given your power and the, you have given your bargaining power, so therefore, the perpetrator is actually going to go for the juggler, he's gonna go for the fresh child. And over, I'm sorry, you know, over, I'm sorry, that sometimes numbu, um, you know, sexually transmitted diseases they take away their innocence, they sure. take away their choices. It's exploitation, it's against human rights, you are dehumanizing mm. a person. Yes, yes, yes. And that's why you find a lot of kids, and by the way, this is just not happening. Um, yes, we're talking about humanitarian settings, but even wealthy people sometimes pimp children. That's why they find good mana, ana, namo. What is going on? Sometimes there is a story uh, in the background. But Rumbi, as we go towards wrapping up our show, there are many things that we've spoken about that um, that are around uh, the issue of, of, of the law, the police. Um, first of all, there's been talk that my police are animal resources. And with the police, sometimes there's been talk that my police are can be, they are corrupt some of them and they are easily you know you know corrupted or you know bribed um for a case to not proceed a lot we we have dealt with a lot 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 of victims and survivors who feel like their cases could have they could have performed better i remember a particular case where mombiaka tuitengeswa there was talk that a cow was sold to go and pay the justice system and for sure the person was given community service uh, for, for sleeping with a 15 year old when they were 26, 27 with other women, with married as a man. What is the government doing to, to, to make sure that resources are available for the justice system to eliminate, um, to eliminate corruption? To also make sure that systems are available from the government itself to ensure that no you know, no center whatsoever, or there is monitoring of those people who are providing humanitarian services, be it also organizations. What has been put in place by both the government and organizations who are into this thing to make sure that their staff members do not become the vicious ones, do not become the harm in the society. The government to make sure that um, 
Communities is not being taken advantage of in that the law, the law is providing the facility. It, it must be citizens. Okay. Uh, thank you for that question. Uh, I, I guess it will also bring us to the fact that people should, whoever, this is actually for the professionals to say, even if you think I'm the policeman, so no one can report me, I'm the person, you're not above the law. No one is above the law. So what government is doing, what organizations are doing, they're working together. Government works with organizations like ARSC, with a, through the Ministry of Health, through the Ministry of Education. You'll appreciate that in schools, there is now comprehensive sexuality education. Mm -hmm. Children are taught this from an early age. Before, you never even used to know about what are my rights, who touches where in my body. But you find out that now when you ask grade ones about my don't touch, they know. Mm -hmm. This is in the mm -hmm. curriculum. Right. When you get to grade three, there's something else that is packaged mm -hmm. to them. When you get to grade seven, all through to high school, so that's one, that's teaching great. children, catching them young. And then there's also the issues about reporting to the police. Sometimes it's not always about going to that one particular police station, mm -hmm. and maybe you talk to someone. There are numbers that are at police stations, the victim-friendly unit, and they'll say, if, you have, um, if you're not happy with what has happened, call this number, call that number. So there's always that next person, like I was saying, mm -hmm. keep on speaking out. Mm -hmm. So fine, this police officer today didn't, re didn't really take my issue anyway. Come back the next day, these people work shifts, go to mm. the next police station, okay. call that number, call that number that says it's an anonymous tip off. Keep on going on until you've been heard. Like I was saying, there's always that one person who will eventually listen to you. Outside the police, in our communities, you'll find there's always going to be that organization. Come to ARC. You mentioned other organizations. Go to Childline. You just mm. need to find their toll free numbers that you don't even need. You just need to get to a phone. Mm. These toll free numbers are prepaid by organizations. So just you know, just reach out to someone, anyone, someone who's passing by, ask them, can you call mm -hmm. Childline for me? Mm -hmm. Can you call ARC for me? I'm struggling. Mm -hmm. When you're sent to the shops, make it a point, throw a note next mm -hmm. door, you know, find a way to reach out. Yes. Wow, Lumbi, I feel like hugging you. <laughs> but I am not hugging you because of Corona and I got my sanitizer. Anyway, so um, I think what my takeaway point is someone will listen to you keep talking go and talk to someone if your mother does not listen if your father does not listen shift Come back again. Come back again. Keep talking. Go to church. Tell someone. Eventually, justice will be served. Citizens, I encourage you to take precaution to COVID-19. Watch the space. I am going to be sharing my, my story of COVID-19 soon. But until next time, sanitize. Put a one meter. We are more than a meter apart here. Stay away from COVID-19. Take precaution. Have a good one.